Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of things that I'm into like edible backyard gardening and also growing tropical plants and the, the such. And today I'm just hanging out in the backyard and thought I would open it up to the world. I've actually got some things I need to do in the background here. I have a banana grove that is in great need of trimming. I'm also trying some new things on the channel today as you can see with the fancy background. I'm actually using streaming software and this is a good opportunity for me to give a shout out to a new channel that I've started called One Step Now where I'm intending to help content creators learn things I learned faster than I learned them. So if you have an interest in that, shoot on over there, give it a sub, turn on the notifications and you'll be notified as new videos come out. Also on Eat Your Backyard, make sure you have the notifications turned on. If you're new, subscribe. Welcome. So you'll be notified as streams come out. Now I'm streaming daily, so love to have you along. In fact, I think I'll look over at the stream on YouTube and see if it shows anybody on. I do not think so. But today, the topic is, put it in the chat window, time to trim the banana grove. Okay. Yeah. Most excellent. Thanks for joining the stream. So I, I think if you're in Florida and you're trying to establish a, hey squids, trying to establish a fruit jungle in your backyard, which a lot of us are, then you're going to want to have a banana grove. And there are lots of options for bananas. Certainly, uh, I have two types in my yard, but there are dozens of types that are readily available. If you need links to bananas online, you can get them in the description for this video. Or check your local nursery. I found that the local nurseries have usually a very limited variety, but if they do have bananas, it's usually something that'll grow well in your area. So, you know, depending on how you roll there, I would say there's a lot of choices available for bananas. The two that I have are Musa bananas and Cavendish bananas. And the dwarf Cavendish bananas are an interesting variety. I have a lot of videos about those on the channel, but they, they get to be about six to eight feet tall, thereabouts, and they stay pretty tightly clumped and they produce a lot of fruit. Very, very good fruit. So for all those reasons, I like them. Uh, one thing I really like is that they look super cool when they're young. They have this variegated pattern to the leaves, but it's like black lines instead of the normal white lines you see in the variegated leaves. So just on the juvenile pups, the smaller banana trees as they grow, but then they have become all green. Oh, wow. I just had a giant blue heron fly over top of me. <laughs> it's like watching a pterodactyl leave so low. Those things are big. All right, let's see who's on. All right. Yeah, Sergis, thank you for joining us. Do banana trees, squids ask, does ban do banana trees uh, fall really easily? And the answer to that is, depends on what you mean by really easily. But if you mean a hurricane, then yes. I'd say they start to fall right about the 50 mile an hour wind range. So if you stay below that, you're probably pretty good. But at that wind range, the leaves will be absolutely shredded. And uh, let me know if it, can you see the Grovex? Actually, I'll go ahead and this will be a good opportunity to try something new here. I will make the window bigger. There we go. Okay. Now you should be able to see the whole yard. 
I'll go get a, a leaf just to kind of show an example. I brought trimming tools. Probably fell off the table already. there it is but you can see that this one is shredded a little bit but in a hurricane it'll be shredded at every one of these points and you can see how easily how easily the uh, how they rip but they're made to rip and then just blow the amount of wind that you get but after a tropical storm or a good you know 30 to 50 mile an hour wind for a little bit of time they'll get shredded like this but the cool thing is they grow back so quickly Look at that. See how much water is just even in that? I don't want to touch it because it's got that banana sap. Beware of the banana sap around computers. This is something most people don't learn, but I've learned it over the years. Do not let the banana sap hit the computer. Yeah, see, oh, that was close. <laughs> that last drip of sap. I'm not gonna play around. You're going back there. Now look, I grabbed one other thing while I was back in the grove. I'm sure the sun shining off of that gives it a good perspective on what it looks like. The banana flower petals. Now these are falling on the ground and I will tell you that the banana tree I'm about to saw down. I'm going to saw down about a 15 to 18 foot banana tree here in a moment. So stay tuned. But these fell off of the banana flower that had many, many bananas on it that were, looked so good and I slept on them and looks like the squirrels got them I would, and birds got every single one of them, picked them clean. So I'll show you that once I chop it down what that looks like. But that happens every once in a while. I, but I've got six hands, you know, a flower full, six different trees that have bananas in them. Oh, sorry about that. Hey, I'm going to go turn off the air conditioner one second. This is actually the first time I've streamed from this particular location. It was the farthest away from the router that I could go without a losing connection. But anyway, yeah, so I've got many hands of bananas around and I'm sure, certainly not short on them. Every once in a while one goes to the critters of the yard. But these banana petals are very rubbery, bizarre things if you've never seen them. and. I'm going to eat a flower here very soon. I tried to eat one not that long ago. I made a little video about it, but the, the interesting thing is here in Florida, these will collect water and the mosquito larvae will grow inside here. Now we've got a lot more people joining the stream. Hey, Joshua. Yeah, the live stream, it's happening. Electric Kids fam, how you doing? So big, yeah. Yeah, you, oh, Sirius1337, you cut your banana down today, that's what you gotta do. We're gonna cut down a giant banana tree today and look inside it and just mess around with it. That's the whole idea of the live stream. I thought people might be into that. It's kinda cool, I always enjoy doing it. Um, <laughs> the banana is such a bizarre thing. It's almost like, you could think of it like a gigantic blade of grass. Uh, I think it was Tom Nation, or was one of one of the viewers on the channel, had said they 
the top of the banana tree was had enough of a cup in it that it would collect water and get mosquito larvae up in there and I actually found water up in the tops of my bananas like that but I didn't see any mosquitoes and I think they're they're dying faster than the mosquito you know they're kind of losing their uh yeah turn dying leaves the leaves are dying anyway <laughs> all right well I suppose there's no time like now all right yeah as I brought this moved at this table all around everything fell down Oh, now's a good time to take a commercial break before we get into it. Let's, let's not go too far too fast. You know what they say about people who rush in. I actually, you know, if I claim to have a fruit forest and I'm claiming to hope to help you to have your fruit forest, then you will have something to pick every single day. Today I had a few things to choose from small berries some cherries but uh, I decided to pick one of these now this is a ponderosa lemon which is a, a tasty one but I'm gonna just it's kind of early this year to, to be getting lemons but you can see that's a beauty now the lemon tree that I have in my yard the thing about citrus trees is they can be tough to grow because of pests and stuff but there's some varieties you can see it's dripping there are some varieties that just grow hard enough that they grow through all that and grapefruit is one certainly that does that but and produces a prolific quantity of fruit lemon is another one limes can also do the same depending they're a little bit more temperamental in my experience but if you can get one of those established this one was actually kind of tough to find a place in my yard because it was very sensitive to to the salty ir uh, nature of uh, my irrigation in my yard. I have very salty irrigation, the groundwater, I live very close to the ocean, so this is what you have. Groundwater is what I use on, in my irrigation system. I'm going to try to minimize squirting lemon juice into the keyboard this time. Might as well. That's the thing. It doesn't have to be any harder than that to drink enough water. All right. Go box. All right. Now I am just gonna wear the the gloves. I've just learned over the years, you can wear them, you can not wear them, you'll never regret wearing them, and especially this kind, they're cheap enough, I'll put a link down in the description for anybody watching this video, but I've avoided so many hospital visits, yeah, I've had plenty of them too. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and, I'm just wondering what I should do, because as you can see, there's all the dead fronds that are hanging down. I think I'll go just whack some of those off with my saw. And by the way, this is the kind of saw I always use. You have to pay extra for this kind of patina along it. But uh, as you can see, meticulously sharpened. This rusty old saw will do the trick. You have to be careful, though, using it as a lopper, as a machete. But it, it definitely does that function. I think I'll just show you some of the leaves first and see what you think.
All right, so just a short amount of time, you can see what the banana leaves look like. It almost makes a perfect writing paper. You could take a Sharpie and write on this, and it's exactly like paper. It's very interesting texture, really, the banana leaf. There's a lot of usable parts to it. Um, you know, certainly makes excellent kindling for the fire. It lights up immediately with that banana sap that's in there, so that's a life hack. All right, let's see. I think the next thing is I wanted to just get enough of those away that you can kind of see the timber effect on the, uh, on it. Oh, where's Jack? Yeah, Jack and I, I told, actually, that's a great question, Electric Kids. Fam, yeah, we are uh, planning on doing a fascinating in-depth paper airplane building stream probably tonight. That might be the kickoff. I'm, I'm doing a live stream tonight on Eat Your Backyard, so I think we might actually do that tonight. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned, I'd say, tonight. Building two very uh, nice paper airplane designs. Yeah, that's interesting, cutting a, a banana tree. Yeah, welcome, gamer girl. Stoked to have you with us. Oh, wow, that probably sounded like the end of the world through that mic. Look at that. That's the good stuff. Get every last drop of that. All right. Oh, what a difference it makes. What do you think? Um, you decide. Should I go right in? Could I drink the, oh, I want to answer this question, uh, Electric Kids fam. Yeah, could I drink the sap of the banana tree? Yes, I have, uh, and it's a pretty horrible moment, really. You'd, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It tastes like liquid banana peels. Okay, here we go. Should I just timber that sucker straight down? Or... Should I remove some of the stuff around it to try to be able to see it better? I don't know how well you can see it through the camera. I'll try this is out of the way. Focus. All right, I'm going to just cut a little bit more away. That's so it's visible. So this is a mulberry tree I've grown from a cutting not that long ago, but you can see it's doing just fine. I'm gonna put that over here. I've got a bunch of mulberry trees growing off to the side. All right, so, yeah, I think you can see it. All right, so there is a young one that's, a couple young ones that are standing straight up that are in the perfect position for fruit. Then there's the one that kind of has the tilt on it. That one has fruit on it. And then there's the big, big one <laughs> that just gave fruit that I let the animals eat. All right. You've never tried mulberries? That famous girl love? I almost want to send you cuttings in the mail. Everybody should try mulberries, certainly. They're very, very easy to grow. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to be, I just did a stream where we planted some and they're all planted. Maybe uh, if you remind me when I get done with this, I'll go grab the pot and show you what they look like just a couple weeks after jamming cuttings, which would mean if you could get cuttings, 
you could grow mulberry trees. All right. It looks good. Okay, we're going in. Going in with the Corona pull saw. I don't work for Corona, but like, look at this saw. It's got miles on it. The old banana widow maker. Check it out. It widow makered right in. I watched lumberjack TV shows, which makes me an expert on this. It's a widow maker. That thing almost barber chaired. But it's actually got the consistency of a banana or watermelon almost. But not that big of a problem that it barber chaired into the fig tree. The fig tree is very flexible and can take it no problem. There it is. All right, I'm gonna cut a piece of it so that you can see the inside of this. And this is so sappy. But that's what's in the middle of it. It's like just tubes. You see the water's just glistening on both sides, dripping out of it. It's actually this small piece probably weighs three pounds, over three pounds. So you imagine that whole chunk of it on the ground there weighs a lot but you know it, when you have a gigantic grove like I do of these musa it becomes a fair amount of stuff yeah xxx games <laughs> laugh out loud how you doing nice yeah don't feel bad for the banana tree I, I mean I feel bad for it also but how the banana tree works is just like grass uh, you trim the blade that's growing currently and all the rest then spring into life. It was actually, it'll die. If you just leave it there, it'll die and deplete the rest of the clump by having to stay alive. It'll die and produce all of its offspring, the pups that grow around the base. Maybe I'll, I'll shovel out a pup to show you what they look like, but they, all the pups spring forth as soon as you chop down the main one. And it's already given the fruit. Now the others will all give fruit. Actually, two of the ones that are on that clump, that, that, one's, that same clump, are, already have fruit on them. So by chopping this down, we're going to give it a turbo effect. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Keep. I'm going to keep going.
So here it is, the scene of the crime. Oh, and it is just dripping sap, like crazy. That's what a banana flower stem looks like. Full grown from a musa. And you see all these things, these are banana, uh, banana peels. But the, <laughs> the bananas themselves have been eaten right down to the stub, all of them. It's pretty cool, really. It's like some modern art. Banana blowing in the wind. I could just, yeah, the Robolini in the background. <laughs> YouTuber fans plans, sweet. That's a cool name. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab a Robolini frond so we can admire it. This one's going in the yard way. Yep, so that's how get rid of a banana. <laughs> that was a banana flower, yeah. I, YouTuber fans plants. That was a banana flower stem. And I have several others. I don't think you, you might, yes, you can see just one of them, I think up in the tree, but here, I'll go put my hand on the bottom of one of the banana flowers, maybe pull it down so you can see it a little bit better to see what the actual banana flower looks like. I almost feel like making that the one that I eat right now. That banana flower that I always just put my hand on looks so fresh. How's the Eureka doing, Sirius? Yeah, it's doing pretty well. Um, nice and green. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy on the one video I made about stump reclump, that the re the stumping of it hurt it very badly, but here the wear I grow them in very loose sand with a lot of nutrients provided. It just grows like unstoppably almost. And so to enjoy it, you know, it makes it, it makes it a plant I want to keep around. But oh, you've been watching for eight years, YouTuber fans plants. That's cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, the first video. Now, now I've produced uh, quite a few videos on Eat Your Backyard. And, a lot also on Surf All Day A1A, which is a lot of surf music videos type of things. And now I've got a couple other channels, but anyway, okay, let's see. Should I... Yeah, that clump. Now you can enjoy the clump, too. This is a thing about certain types of trees and things in the yard I always tend to accentuate, which is that, you know, that area, that banana grove to me is a very special, unique capability it's a zenith of achievement in terms of my fruit jungle and being able to have now you know I'm happy to say non-stop banana production you know one those bananas I got there I couldn't have finished them all by the time I got into the next one starting so I've produced a non-stop of a crop which is super cool like mulberries will do that and there are a couple others that will do that in your yard 
But the banana, but you gotta have so many of them. So you ha always inevitably have to create a grove concept with the evil bunny ears. And then, it, you know, banana grove, it, once you get it to the place where it's producing that kind of fruit, it's, you know, you gotta maintain it or it just becomes a unpleasant place, in my opinion. You know, like it's just too many snakes and too much, too hard to get back in there when you got to pick the fruit you feel like you're about to get attacked by wasps so i like to keep it kind of cleared out enough you know and that way it encourages being used because it's a dark cool place with these gigantic basically blades of grass so it's a cool place all right yeah the sago's palm yeah i've been thinking about taking some cuttings and doing it as part of this what you got growing on series that i've been doing put it in a pot and grow some cuttings off of sago i've got you know so many neighbors that have beautiful sagos with little pups on them but that might be more of a springtime thing when i go for the sago play i don't know though you might i, I might just do it i like the idea yeah. oh before i forget too let's see I'll try one of these. I'll just take a second to admire the foliage and clear consequences of the Robolini palm. The very short, this is one you'll never be disappointed to have the to have the gloves on, certainly, as I've experienced them many times without the gloves. But those those spines only go so far down. This is the Robolini palm, the dwarf date palm, which is beautiful, of course, and a lot of us love it dearly. And uh, the leaves are just, they've got that classic date palm leaf, coconut palm, whatever, but dwarf. It's just small enough, and you can see it gets that weeping in the leaves. I love how it bends over on the end there. What a great choice. And this is very common, too, very easy to grow. And I know our banana video is going off the rails into Robolini town, but sometimes you got to turn the wheel. you're in Robolini town why not stop by Seedville look at that Robolini seeds see those little black guys those are the ripe ones and then there's some green ones that are coming in I'm, I'm a big appreciator of the uh, geometric nature of what's going on in the yard it's incredible so this is a good example so yeah, these will actually grow, and I've got some that I planted over there, but maybe I'll, you know what, I'll just go ahead and, this is why I bring a plate out, because inevitably I'm doing things like this. Eh. I'm going to just take some of these seeds. Oh boy. This is the thing, once you start picking Robolini seeds, you've really, have you gone too far? And you feel like you have to get every seed. Uh, the OCD flared right up. There you go. It. There you go. All right. Ooh, it's getting sunny. Is it wind resistant? The Robolini is fairly wind resistant, and it's a fairly fast grower too. So you're going to get. Frond regrowth rapid enough that any wind event shouldn't bum you out for that long. Look at these little, see those little mini sago seeds. They get, I've seen them get much bigger than this, but I think the little ones will do the trick. I've also got some lemon seeds on here from this lemon tree, and they grow readily. Let's see these two guys. It's still hot out here. I thought it was going to be cool. Turns out when you're sawing down bananas, you get on. But yeah, these will grow very easily, but the thing is with growing citrus from seeds is you, you got to be aware that it, um, it has its pitfalls, and one is that if you're not grafted to the right kind of root for your area, you might not get good fruit, it might struggle. That's certainly the case in Central Florida or in Florida in general where we, uh, where we use uh, the grafted roots of um, 
really old citrus trees that have been growing in the forests around here for a long time. They call it Indian River fruit, but you know, very important. So you could grow a lemon tree and you might actually get lemons, you never know, but the point is uh, if you get one at the nursery that's grafted tr to a, an actual lemon, the thing to do, lemon tree fruit, the thing to do would be to uh, just buy one at the nursery. <laughs> that's what I would always do with citrus, but I've grown them from seeds. I've actually grown grapefruit from seeds and they've got gigantic heroic thorns that'll pop basketballs and not a single fruit. Yeah. So that happens. Drink water or you'll feel bad. Robolini can get 20 to 30 feet tall? No way. I do not think so. I base this on observing many. I think it would be more like you'd be lucky if you got a Robolini to be 12 to 15 feet tall. It's hot in Florida. Yeah, sorry. I apologize. I should not complain about living in Florida. You're correct there. That was not good form. Yeah, I'm gonna I need to trim that lemon tree up for sure. And I think I think that's probably all I'll do on that banana grove, which is you know, I set, I cleared it out. I, I actually left the stump about four feet tall there. It's this giant stump, but I'm gonna leave that there maybe saw off one more logs worth whatever I can fit in that trash can but it's it's really almost totally full and that trash can will end up weighing like 80 pounds 100 pounds it's amazing how heavy and dense it is 10 degrees serious where is the 10 degrees right now yes this is the Eureka palm yep this one and you can see why on the side of my house you can see why they call it the sugarcane palm right I mean it's just you can see the colors as it gets older and this is why I like to also have the leaves trimmed away because I, I like that look a lot more than like you know that look so but then I'll just have the fronds at the top where they're healthiest and but I try to keep the, the clump at this, so you can see the sugarcane palm feature of it. They call this one the Eureka, the sugarcane palm, and I always like to do that. In Germany, wow, that's so cool. Here's a question then, serious. How long would it take you from your location to reach the Alps? I, my, brother, my brother has skied in Kitzbühel. Yeah, I wonder how many hours it would take to reach it. Or the other question I would ask is, how long would it take you to get to the closest rideable wave drive to? <laughs> I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to start a series, so to speak, on my, probably on Surf All Day, A channel, that it will ask characters I know 20 questions rapidly and get their answers, which I think is a funny thing to do. A lot of other channels do it, but I think it'd be funny to ask some of the characters I know, and one of them would be, yeah, what's the farthest you've ever lived from a rideable, farthest car ride you've ever lived from a rideable wave? By car, yeah. 800 kilometers, yeah. Yeah, so maybe six or eight hours. Not bad. Not growing any bananas there. Maybe some bamboo. Well, that's one of the things I'm also interested in is the bamboo um, growing areas of the world where they can grow it actually places that it snows. And here we have a type called bambusa that's commonly grown that's more like clumping, that is more tropical, but anyway. Will I be in the hurricane path? Uh, thanks, Cool Boy 5. Uh, no, I will not be in the hurricane path. It's gonna. I am in central eastern Florida, which is kind of near the Kennedy Space Center, and that hurricane they're saying is gonna go kind of loop under the, into the Gulf. So we're gonna miss this one. Although it could get windy, you never know. Yeah, we get a lot of those. We were spared this year in this particular area. We've had years where we had three, you know, tropical storm level, 
events go over us in a year, but this year it wasn't bad, so yeah, it's nice. The, the uh, cleansing effect of hurricanes in our this yard, it's transformed it many times over, which uh, I kind of like, you know, so it gives an excuse to do something new. All right, well, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. I think we're going to end this one here. I'm going to log back on later tonight. Like I said, do another one. We're going to build some paper airplanes. <laughs> All right. And, uh, yeah, I think also talk about palms and dealing with palms in the winter was the topic of it. But I think we're also going to build some paper airplanes either before or after. Because, uh, you know, first things first. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, click the links in the description if you want to support the channel. Then anything you get, like at Amazon afterwards, within that day, goes towards helping the channel. Doesn't cost you anything extra. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard.